Hello, my name is Wayne Hamilton, and in this video I'm going to be talking about computer networking. Uh, the video is specifically aimed at students studying GCSE in the UK, and I'm going to try and use the Cisco Packet Tracer software to hopefully reinforce some of the topics that you've already studied uh, in class. So please note that in this video I'm going to be assuming that you already have a basic understanding of network, and you've covered most of the th topics um, theoretically. Uh, we'll also not be covering all of the different topics that you would need to do GCSE. And instead, what I hope to do is take a practical approach by using simulation to give you a better understanding of some of the theory. We're going to be covering the topics of LANs and WANs, looking a little bit about hardware, addressing uh, and protocol. But note, we're not going to be covering all of the topics uh, and see the list on the right hand side. If you were hoping for a complete sort of introduction to networking with all the theory or coming here to do some revision and wanted to cover all of the topics, I could highly recommend you visit the Craig and Dave uh, site. They've got an excellent set of video tutorials there. I'm always pointing my students to them. Uh, they will cover all of the different topics kind of uh, in detail from a theoretical point of view. So if that's what you're after, um, perhaps you should uh, jump over there before coming back to watch this video. So what's Cisco Packet Tracer and what do you do uh, in order need to do in order to download it? Um, if you Google the Cisco Packet Tracer software um, and go to their Academy page, um, here you'll see that you can enrol uh, on a basic course uh, with Cisco and download their uh, Packet Tracer software. Uh, the course that they uh, offer is a a 10 hour course that's completely free um, it will certainly cover all of the things that I'm about to do here but obviously uh, not everybody has 10 hours uh, to do this. Uh, you would sign up um, and once you've done the sign up that will take you to the, the download page. Uh, you can also take a look at their introductory course that will give you an overview of how you use Packet Tracer and as I say many of the things that I'm going to cover now uh, but it will take you about 10 hours in order to complete their course. Okay, so what exactly is a packet tracer? Well, as you can see, it's a, it's a piece of software that we can use to simulate computer networks. Uh, in this case here, we've also got a, a complicated large computer network that might be uh, a business that's got uh, multiple sites uh, connecting their WANs uh, through a, a connecting their LAN, sorry, through a, a WAN networks. Uh, we've got a mixture of servers, we've got home devices as well, like routed. Uh, wireless home kind of routers and things. Um, the company may use this to uh, try and fault find uh, problems in their network, see why the network's acting slow. They can perhaps try out different uh, devices to see if they can improve things or uh, they're gonna expand their network. Uh, and it's also used by uh, people to learn uh, basically how computer networks uh, work. But you'll be pleased to know we certainly won't be starting with anything as complicated as this. Um, what I will do, I'll just begin with going through some of the, the basics of uh, the kind of devices you can use with Packet Tracer. So here we are with a, a clean network, nothing there. Um, down in the bottom left hand corner here, what we've got is different types of uh, network devices. So we've got some uh, routers which we'll use to connect different networks together, perhaps uh, within a LAN or connecting LANs together through the WAN. We've got various kind of switches that are used in a local area network to connect devices together. Uh, some hubs, which are kind of like switches, but they're not very intelligent. We've got wireless access points and uh, home routers and gateways, the kind of thing you might have in your house. Uh, then looking at the different devices that we could use, uh, we've got PCs, laptops, servers, uh, smartphones, and a whole host of other kind of devices. And we've also got our different various connections that we can have here, whether they be uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi or serial cables uh, that we can use to connect these devices together. Well, let's get started and build a really simple kind of network. Um, I'm just going to connect a few devices together in uh, a local area network. So we'll start with putting a switch uh, on our network. We can double click on that device to kind of see a little bit more about it. Uh, as you can see up here, we've got a, a 
fairly kind of basic looking switch there that's got uh, 24 Ethernet ports. Uh, so we have 24 different computers in this local area network using this one switch. Uh, you can go through and you can configure the various uh, ports and things on each of the devices here as well. Next, let's go to end devices and just put a couple of PCs uh, onto our network. Uh, once again, you can double click on these and look inside them and see what kind of devices are inside them. Uh, what we've got here is uh, a network that's uh, got a, a 2.4 gigahertz uh, Ethernet uh, LAN, uh, WAN wireless LAN connection. Um, if you want to, you can kind of turn off devices like this and you can remove some of these and perhaps put different modules in there. So in this case, I'm adding a fast Ethernet connection instead of the, the wireless connection that we have there. And I'll need to turn the PC back on in order for that to take effect. No, it is a proper simulation and effectively this PC will now be kind of booting up inside uh, the, the, the software and recognizing it's got a new device inside of it. Uh, if we continue looking at here, we can see we've got a uh, different settings we can change. So some of the popular things you might need to do is going and change some of your network settings. Uh, you can see what some of the desktop things look like and later on we'll look at the way you can uh, use a PC like this to try and browse different kind of uh, websites and things. Um, you can also go in and type in commands uh, from the command prompt and perhaps see what files are in that computer etc. But we'll come back to that. Okay, so we've got our two uh, PCs and a switch now. Let's look about connecting them together. Uh, Packet Tracer has this idea of this lightning bolt here will um, kind of automatically look at the interfaces on a device like a PC and see, you know, is it Ethernet, is it wireless, etc. And kind of if you try and connect it to a switch, it'll find the, the most suitable kind of device. In this case here, uh, it's connecting up a fast Ethernet connection for us. And we can do the same with this one here and connect it there. Uh, and those devices are now connected together through the switch. Uh, you can see the little orange indicator lamps. It's going to take a little bit of time for the network to recognize the, the switch to recognize these kind of devices uh, and allow traffic to flow uh, between them. As you can see, one are just there, and the second one will connect in a, in a moment. However, um, that's the hardware. Um, for a network to work successfully, um, there is not just the hardware, we need to do some configuration uh, within a network. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to on these two different PCs, I'm going to go in, I'm going to set up their IP settings. So IP stands for Internet Protocol, and each device on the network needs to have an IP address. Uh, there are a series of uh, four sets of digits, four sets of numbers that can go between 0 and 255. Uh, IP addresses um, come in two sort of main types, really. They are public and private, and within a LAN, you normally will use uh, addresses that are in the private address space, um, such as this 192.168.0.2. Okay, so I'm going to just copy that one for a second. Um, subnet masks, don't really need to know this for GCSE, but these are a way of kind of uh, allowing networks to have more than 255 kind of. Uh, devices uh, on a single kind of network. Uh, but now I've configured that one, I can close that one down and go to here. Uh, and essentially what we'll need to do for the network, for the IP address of this one, is it needs to be in the same range, meaning that the first three sets of digits will need to be the same, um, but the last digit would need to be different. You could think of this as kind of saying they're in the the same town but a different house or something if you wanted uh, and then we've got a uh, an address kind of subnet address there again uh, these things here the gateway and dns and dhcp we'll, we'll talk about those things later uh, but now that we have these two devices uh, on the same lan and they have ip addresses within the same range what we should be able to do is check that the we, we can kind of communicate with the other device so what I'll do is I will start up uh, a terminal window on 
a command prompt on this one. And in here, if I say ping, I then type in, copy in the address of the first device that I kind of had. Nine two dot six eight dot dot. Gosh, what did I say? See, can we blow that device? Let's see what it was again. I've forgotten. It was not dot two for this one. And there we go. So ping is a, a, a tool, a software tool that essentially sends messages. Uh, to other devices uh, in a network using their using here the IP address um, and essentially it will tell us that traffic went from this PC 5 to PC 4 and came back um, very quickly in a, in a millisecond um, and there were no kind of errors uh, as they were going through that network. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, that was part one, uh, where we've introduced Packet Tracer, built, configured, and tested a simple LAN. Uh, I hope you've downloaded and installed Packet Tracer. If so, uh, you can download an activity file, which will be linked here. Uh, the idea of this, it will contain part of the network that I created, but it's not fully working. Uh, and you need to follow the instructions to complete the setup and configuration, and then you're able to check to see if your setup is correct. Again, part two, I hope now that the introductions are, are over, we can speed things up a little bit and uh, start working on some wireless uh, connectivity in our LAN. Uh, and we'll have another activity at the end of part two. See you then.